hey everyone welcome back well wishing you all the compliments of the season and as promised earlier I'm going to take you all on the journey of my friend's wedding it's going to be a complete walk through the entire wedding preparations and traditions that we have in Goa the Goan wedding is just not a one-day affair but around a week full of fun the Goan wedding also comes with a number of tradition and rituals to be followed. All these rituals have a deep meaning to it. Now the very first ceremony is the Tsudo ceremony, also known as the Bangal ceremony, that marks the start of the Goan wedding celebration as it depicts the start of the bride's new life journey. It is a tradition wherein the brides are filled with a set of beautifully colorful bangles that sometimes vary from village to village. A local bangle seller, also known as Kankonkar in uh, the local language, is invited to the bride's maternal uncle's house or sometimes the bride's house or sometimes uh, the bride visits the local store where the ceremony takes place. At the end of the ceremony, the Kankon car is offered some money, coconut and some rice grains as a token of gratitude and appreciation by the bride's family. Winter's here, the snow is falling on a car. Next is the Dose ceremony. Now, Dose is a traditional Goan sweet. Well, for weddings in Goa, there is a tradition wherein the dose is prepared at the bride's and the groom's house, respectively. The family, relatives, neighbours and friends join together in the making of the dose and help to prepare the same. They recite the Goan mandos and other holy verses and bestow their blessings on the bride and the groom. The dose once prepared is beautifully decorated with colourful sweets. Next, a few days prior to the wedding, a traditional ceremony wherein the meal is prepared in honour of the family's ancestors known as Bikaranch and John. This meal is for the beggars and the poor people in and around the village. This food is more of an offering and thanksgiving to the dead ancestors of the family. The beggars are offered a few yards of unstitched fabric, some coconut oil for their hair and a cigarette according to their preferences. They are also given a sweet dish called dosh, soji and bananas. Following the Bikaracha John is the Dene custom or the Dowry custom wherein the bride's family offers household essentials that would be useful to the bride after marriage right from the jewellery, clothes to furniture and kitchenware. Please note that this is a gift that the girl's parents willingly give to the girl to begin her married life. Now the next ceremony called the rose ceremony is usually done at least two to three days prior to the wedding or at least a day prior to the wedding. Now this is the anointing ceremony wherein the bride and the groom are anointed with coconut milk by their parents, relatives, neighbours and friends in their respective houses. This ceremony symbolises the beginning of new life. The coconut milk is used and is said to cleanse or purify the couple's souls before the wedding which also signifies the end of their single lives. Nowadays the rose is adulterated with items such as eggs, beer, shampoo, milk and so on. These are added by the excited friends and close relatives to add fun to this rose ceremony. Once the rose is applied, it is said that the bride and groom should not leave their houses or cannot meet up before the wedding. 
Logically, it was meant to keep the couples safe from any accidents. People also throw coins or cash into the bowls, which is later given to the maids that help in the preparation of the coconut juice. Winter's here, the snow is falling on a car as we drive for miles to the little town called home. And finally, the big day arises. It is a day full of excitement and happiness. It starts with a close relative of the groom's family along with the hairstylist or the makeup artist coming over to the bride's house to help her dress up with the wedding dress and the other items. Then you have a lot of photography and videography with the bride's family, with the bride's relatives, with the bridesmaids, the best men and all of that sort. Then you have all the close relatives and friends bless the bride and the groom at their respective residences before they leave to the church in a beautifully decorated wedding car. Now as we arrived to the church, we had the church all decorated beautifully as per the theme and uh, that was Christmas. So um, it really looked amazing, really beautiful. And then we had a bride arriving in her beautifully decorated wedding car, all excited, all happy, taking this new uh, step in her life. Um, well, um, and then soon we had the groom arriving, uh, who was a little more excited, actually. Um, so the, you know, the the best part was he thought that uh, he needs to hand over the bouquet, the bride's bouquet, to his bride uh, and take off the veil. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny but then um, we all had to scream and tell him to stop and you know it's the best man who has to do that job and then we had uh, this um, you know a little small tradition over here that the uh, best men one of the best men has to hand over the bride's bouquet uh, to the bride with a kiss on her cheeks Winter's here, the snow is falling on a car as we drive for miles to the Then the priest begins the ceremony by welcoming the bridal couple into the church and offers them his good wishes. The wedding mass begins with a hymn and the bridal couple walks down the aisle with the wedding procession preceded by little flower girls and page boys. Now children are considered a good fortune at a wedding. The bridal couple is then followed by the bridesmaids and the best men and the close family members. Now one thing that you'll always notice is that you'll have your bride always standing on the left side of the groom and this is a symbol of protection. Now skipping to the main part of the celebration is the exchange of vows uh, wherein the priest guides the couple through the whole ride. He tells them to join their right hands and declare their consent before God and the church. Having done this, the couple takes their wedding vows wherein they promise to love, respect and order each other in their lives. The priest uh, blesses the couple joining them together in marriage and says, May the Lord in His goodness strengthen your consent and fill you all both with His blessings. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Then the priest blesses the wedding rings so that the couple will have a deep faith in each other. 
do the Lord's will and always live together in peace, goodwill and love. The bride and groom exchange rings with a promise of unconditional love and fidelity. The priest then concludes the ceremony with a final blessing followed by a prayer. The congregation joins in to bless the couple. The priest and the couple sign the church register that serves as a valid legal document of marriage. A copy of this document is sent to the registrar of marriage. After the nuptial mass is over, we have a few photography and videography shots taken at the church of the bridal couple and as well as of the whole bridal squad. And here's where the actual fun begins. The reception. You have the wedding hall all beautifully decorated for the big day. A night full of fun, enjoyment and dance. bridal couple into the reception hall. They are welcomed by all with showers of confettis or flowers. A confetti is a sign of blessings showered on the couple by the people. The MC then escorts the couple around the hall and leads them to the center where the wedding cake is placed. The couple then cuts the wedding cake and feeds each other a bite of their first slice. Now, cutting of the cake signifies sharing their life and feeding the cake to each other symbolizes couples vows to nourish and care for each other. After the cutting of the cake, the champagne is popped and served. A toast is raised to the bride and the groom by a close family or friend of the couple. The bride and the grooms then reply to the toast by thanking the family and friends for sharing the special day with them. Wow. Following the toast, we have the first dance of the couple as husband and wife. Well, Shweta and Eliza had been uh, practicing all these days for the uh, perfect dance and well, it was definitely perfect. Followed by the first dance is non-stop music and dance ranging from slow ballroom music to cha-cha-cha, jive and then to group music. Well, I had a lot of fun. You guys can actually watch me dancing like crazy. We actually had a good squad of best men and bridesmaids. We indeed danced non-stop like crazy. It was definitely one of the fun-filled nights.
well last but not the least the practices that we had the um the times that i have been busy was all because of this beautiful dance that we put together for uh, the reception it was a flash mob by the whole bridal squad and it was really fun and amazing all our hard work had really paid off Come on, clap your hands, everybody. All the beautiful people are standing on the dance floor. Come on, clap your hands. Coming to the end of the reception, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My best wishes to Shweta and Eliza, wishing them a very happy married life. If you guys enjoyed the video, then please do not forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell button to get notified for further videos. Until then, bye bye, stay safe, and take care.